This is yes. something new that I would like to introduce to the channel, which is explosive topics. Mm -hmm. But I have seen so many African Americans try to out African the Africans. Yes. Absolutely. Diasporans, you come across here with your US money and flaunt it around and you don't do right. Love on these people, mm -hmm. love on the land. Love on the Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. yes. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you come over here and disrespect a land that you was never even born and raised yes. in? This cloud right here looks like an, uh, a mushroom explosion cloud. You said it looks like an explosion. How? Because it's kind of shaped like one of those mushroom clouds that you see in the movies after an explosion. Uh, after an explosion. <laughs> So we are here today. I have Kimberly, the Thank passport you. traveler. Thank Before you. we even get started on today's conversation, make sure you go on over to her YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button, like her content, and share her videos. Thank you. So today we are going to be talking about an arising situation happening here in Ghana where more and more um, people from the diaspora are coming here and just causing issues okay mm -hmm. and i feel like it's even getting to the point like kimberly and i have um been discussing off camera is how the more and more people from the diaspora are coming here causing more conflict causing more harm than good mm -hmm. yes i mean and it's to the point where i believe when i walk into government offices immediately they don't accept me well and i think it's because they think we're all like that. They mm -hmm. think we all come over here privileged with this self sense, sense uh, a sense of entitlement. Uh -huh. um, I witnessed this lady getting, African American lady getting her house. She moved into a brand, we together moved into a brand new house mm -hmm. for the first people in the house. Mm -hmm. And the workers came and she talked so nasty to them. The housekeeper had just mopped the floor and the workers don't know, they're coming in. They really don't even speak the language. She was like, freshly mop, fresh mop, fresh mop, fresh mop. I said, Melissa, they don't know your floor is freshly mop. Can you just say, excuse me, my floor is freshly mop. You're, you're talking at them, mm -hmm. fresh mop, mm -hmm. fresh mop, fresh mop. Mm -hmm. Then they needed to stand in a chair and put a bub up. They took her chair, she said, oh my God. Why would you stand in my chair? You didn't come prepared. You didn't bring a ladder. You're just standing in my chairs. It's okay. You think it's okay to do that? Just go, 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 go. Don't bring them back. They won't be using my restaurant when they come back. They better sh outside somewhere. And I was just like, whoa. Right. I eventually had to snap on her myself. Mm -hmm. and after I finished because she would poke at me and my husband a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Once I snapped on her because I just couldn't take it no more, I packed my stuff, sat outside the gate, and called the driver to come get me. Right. Didn't go back. End of the story. The mm -hmm. end. For me, I don't know about, you know, and I'm pretty sure there's other people who probably have similar stories, but for me, I'm noticing this trend of bad behavior is coming from people who are specifically coming from America. Mm -hmm. I don't know if your experience mm -hmm. with this particular person yes. you're referring to is from America. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So I've, I've noticed that all of the encounters that I have had um, that has been in a negative light has been encounters with other Americans. And my thing is, is that if you have that mentality and you have that perception and you're not coming to Ghana with the intention of adding value, adding mm -hmm. substance to being here in Ghana, then why are you coming? Exactly. Don't come to Ghana looking for the U.S. Right. I came to oh, Ghana thank you for to saying that. embrace the culture and the continent and this, this country. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to Ghana looking for the U.S. Right. And so... That's what a lot of people do. When you hear all the complaints of that you don't have this and you don't have that, did you do any type of studying before you got here? Mm -hmm. Did you think you've seen growing up as children, we all seen how they portray Africa. They Absolutely. don't even say country. They just call it all Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa has this. They're poor. They're dusty. They're dirty. They're this. So you come into the continent. You should have already had some type of vision in your head that this is not like the U.S. So why do right. you get here and expect to see the U.S. over right, here? Right, right, exactly. And and why, even if you are looking for the U.S., right, why are you coming to 
Ghana. Why are you coming to Africa? If the U.S. is what you want, then you should stay exactly. in the U.S. Because you're exactly. going to get whatever it is you're looking for. Exactly. And I feel like we're coming to a point where um, the government of Ghana has to stand up. They're going to have to take a stance. They're going to have to do something about this. Because if Ghana, if Ghana is not careful enough, they're going to find a situation where Ghana is going to be out of control. Because it is going to be an uproar. It's going to be so much confusion. It's going to be so many of the locals who are going to find themselves in unhappy situations and circumstances because of this negative energy that certain people from the diaspora is bringing here to the mm -hmm. continent and it's just not fair mm -hmm. it's not fair to the people who are already here residing who have been born and raised um in this you know country they have worked even harder than the people that is coming over here so my thing is how dare you how dare you how dare you come over here and disrespect a land that you was never even born and raised yes. in Yes. So for them to extend that olive branch to even invite you back home to even come and say, you know, come, we welcoming you with open arms. And mm -hmm. then you get over here and excuse my language, but show your natural ASS. Yes, yes, yeah, true. It's true. I've had people on my video that say, um, what type of ghetto are you driving through? It's ugliest, dirtiest, dusty. Do they even have paved roads? And when you say people, are you referring to... Um, People from Americans. the diaspora that's mm -hmm. here? Um, no, no, Americans on my TikTok. Oh, okay, on okay, just commented, media. okay. So okay. I, if it's not your cup of tea, you don't have to worry about ever coming here. Mm -hmm. If it's not your cup of tea, you don't even have to be here. So, it, you know, I can understand people being in the diaspora commenting the way they have because, mm -hmm. you know, they're there in America for a reason. But my thing is, is those ones that are taking the initiative to travel from wherever their various places to come to the continent and then misbehave the way that they are. It's like, what is your point? What is your purpose? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just stay where you are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My first year, mostly when I was, I, I stayed two months at One Africa. That's where I lived when I first got here because okay. that was my first home. Mm -hmm. And I would see people come in, uh, African-Americans come in, fully African dress from head to toe mm -hmm. on the hottest days, uh -huh. uncomfortable. They look uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. What I know. And, and then as I live here, I see the Ghanaians don't dress like that mm -mm. every day. It has to be a special occasion, occasion. Mm -hmm. but I have seen so many African Americans try to out African, the Africans. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I love that. It's the, it's just like, I, I saw most of this at one Africa and it was a wow. very, I was sitting in room two and watch them day after day. I, I would always know these are black Americans because Africans don't dress like that mm -hmm. on no regular day. Right. Because you never know the mental thought process of a person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my husband and I, along with our children, have recently experienced where... You know, our neighbor received us with open arms, warm welcoming. You know, we was like, oh, this is going to be great. You know, we have this whole, you know, amazing community that we're moving into. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, it has turned into pure hell. Really? Pure hell. So all of that fake love and, and you know, fake energy to now, make it seem... do you mind if this is, is this American or... Oh, he's American. American. Really? He's American. So, um... You know, with that, I want to say that sometimes you almost want to shield yourself mm -hmm. from even interacting with mm -hmm. these different um, Americans or people coming from the diaspora. Just because you don't know what their true intentions are, you don't know what their true energy is, and mm -hmm. you don't know if by opening yourself up, you know, and just uh, uh, just um, allowing the the warm welcome that they're giving you and embracing that moment what it's opening and exposing you to exactly it, it, so it, sometimes it. you know i almost wish that that exchange never even took place yes. that he would have just stayed you know in his place of residence that we had would have just moved in and enjoyed our peace and now our peace has just been disturbed because of this neighbor who is just a constant nuisance is it to the point where now you're trying to figure out a way out of it like how how are we going to end this Right. Oh, I've been there. Right. I know that. Oh, God. Uh -huh. know. Today's topic is so important because I feel like situations that I'm currently, as you know, we're making this video, I'm currently, you know, dealing with and even prior situations that you have dealt with is becoming more and more of an issue for Ghana. And now on top of 
you know, this um, uncomfortable disrespect that they are even, you know, certain diaspora are imposing upon the people that are here. It's also now we're incorporating land issues uh -huh. on top of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before we realize it, it's going to be a melting pot of one issue and another issue mm -hmm. and another issue until it spirals out of control. And then you're going to be running to try to put out put out this blazing fire yeah. that should have been put out before it even got to the point of yes. blazing. Yes. yes. So I feel yes. like these conversations not only has to happen, but um, I feel like necessary steps and measure measures should be taken to eliminate this before it becomes a bigger problem. They yeah. know that we're coming here. Mm -hmm. Have a system in place that's going to help. You welcomed us home. Mm -hmm. You said come home. Mm -hmm. And so we're here. Have a system in place that's going to be there to help us mm -hmm. and not exploit us. Absolutely. With um, the diaspora who are coming here and they don't have those good intentions in mind that they should stay wherever it is that they are yes. and not come here to drag down um, Ghana or to, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, give like a negative light. And I feel like even with this whole land issue that is happening with um, even Americans, y'all, Americans, okay? Mm -hmm. Now they coming from, you know, wherever they are in America to Ghana and they are intentionally taking the money of other Americans, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Misleading them. These land searches that they're portraying to do, maybe they're not doing it. I don't know what's happening, you know, and, and that's why I kind of was, was getting my feet wet with the whole land um, situation. And then I quickly backed out because I was like, I don't want to be that one who is here trying to scam or take anybody money. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to mm -hmm. hear my name in the middle of nobody's Nothing. land Nothing. issues at all. It's, it's people on my TikTok that there's about three people that wanted to send me money because I would take them looking at empty land mm -hmm. and they wanted me to take the money. And I had to let them know, look, I'm not going to put my hand in that because what happens is you're going to sell me your money. I have to now put your money in somebody else's hand. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what happens after that. Right. But whatever, right or wrong. You're, you're going to gonna... be held accountable exactly. for it. Exactly. So I, I won't do it. I let them know I, mm -hmm. I won't do it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at with it. What do we do? You know, I feel like Ghana, the government has to step up when it comes to this land issue. They're going to have to some way, somehow find a, a common balance with, among the chiefs and the people who are coming from the diaspora into Ghana mm -hmm. to kind of settle this land issue because too many people that's even looking to come to Ghana is being taken advantage of. Yeah. And it's not right. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes back to what is your purpose in coming to Ghana? Is it to make as much money as you can so that you can live a comfortable life and F your brother and your sister right. who you, you, right. you should be opening the doors for, right. but yet you're kicking them before they even have a chance to swim? Exactly. Like, exactly. It's, exactly. It's mind boggling to me, y'all. It's mind blowing the things that is taking place and somebody has to take a stand. Like somebody, we, somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to voice an opinion. Somebody has to have something to say. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't just be sitting back saying, oh, well, it wasn't me. It wasn't my land yeah, issue, people, wasn't it? People can't be scared. It's a topic right. that I think people are afraid to talk about. Uh -huh. um, we have to talk about it. We have to have those hard conversations. Exactly. Or, or we're going to keep sucking it up and the poison will just keep infecting everybody. Exactly. We have to have these hard conversations. Exactly. That's all. Exactly. We, we, we need to do better. Yep. Ghana needs to do better. Absolutely. Diaspora, you come across here with your U.S. money and flaunt it around and you don't do right. Love on these people. Mm -hmm. Love on the land. Love on the Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. You know, don't like, just like we don't want them exploiting us. Don't exploit them. Be exactly. kind. Be, be, have a, know how to talk to people. Right. And I feel like it's been this unhealthy exchange for some time now, which is leading now, what I just talked about, catapulting into bigger issues is that um, when Americans initially was coming to Ghana, it was a lot of um, Ghanaians taking advantage of, you know, Americans mm -hmm. that were coming, taking their money for land or purposes or whatever business transactions, doing whatever with the money and um, just not being honest. So instead of that being a stepping stone to change things and do better, to build that better relationship, now Americans, it was like a light bulb. Oh, ding! 
Oh, we, we I can, can do, do the too. same thing. We can do it too. Oh, yep. that's all I got to do to make money and live good. Oh, yep. and, and I see other Americans who are, or people from the diaspora who wanted to come to the continent and come to Ghana. Let me use that as an opportunity to take advantage of the situation and put money in my pocket. Yeah. So meanwhile, your pockets are getting fatter and fatter. And meanwhile, your brother and your sister is still is struggling and mm -hmm. suffering. And suffering. Suffering. Doesn't that remind us of, say, of, of the slave times? Suffering. So we're still mentally enchained. We're still mentally chained. We're still mentally enslaved. Yes. And until we change our thought process, until we change our mindset, we're just going to keep going down as a people. We're going to keep going down as a race. And, you know, it's just going to be from one part of the world mm -hmm. to the next. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to be coming down lower, lower, and lower because we have the same thought process. My bad times and my judgment came from the black Americans. Mm. And uh, it, I had a lady come to my store about three times. Mm -hmm. And every time she came to my store, she had something negative to say. A black American? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just don't have this. And you. this is exactly how you don't have this. And you don't, oh, you got toothpaste, but I don't like that type of toothpaste. Oh, you got so I don't use that type of soap. Let me get those. Oh, those paper towels. I don't use those. Okay. Very fine. entitled. Don't buy nothing. She mm -hmm. comes back the second time. Same thing. She don't buy nothing. Now she comes the third time. This mm -hmm. is when I let her have it. No cuss words or nothing. I just politely let her know how I felt. She said, I, I, I sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. I'm a person that loves to sit on the ground. I don't now because my knee, but mm -hmm. I love sitting on the floor. For three years, I sat on the floor. It wasn't that we didn't have a chair. Mm -hmm. I just liked the floor. Well, it, do you know that the, the sitting on the ground centers you? Yes. Something about it centers yes. your energy. So she does. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, she doesn't know this. Clearly. Mm -hmm. So she came to my store and she said, you need to stop sitting on that ground. And, and if you go, I understand you like to sit on the ground. But if you're going to sit on the ground and lay on the ground and take naps on the ground, you need to go buy you the most expensive plush rug that you can find. I said, excuse me, I picked out the mat that I wanted to have. I came to Ghana with enough money to buy anything I personally wanted. Right. I chose that. Mm -hmm. I saw all the rugs. Mm -hmm. She said, but you need to look like a queen and stop wearing this type of stuff. Get you some African clothes made and start. You need to step out like a queen every day. And I never would have built a store and started competing with the natives. That's why they don't like you because you built a store right in the middle where they stuff and, and, and you competing with them. This is how she was talking to me until oh I let God. her have it. Right. Literally, I let her have it. She deserved every word I said. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, thank God, I didn't have to say one cuss word, but she felt me. And she she never came back. She never did it again. Mm -hmm. But why? Exactly. Why do you feel she was one of the people that was out African. Uh -huh. and African. She uh -huh. was one of them. <laughs> She said, girl, I have a driver, a personal driver, and I don't even open my own car doors. Well, I didn't either. I had a personal driver. My husband opens my door everywhere we go. Right. What makes you think I don't have the same thing? You don't know me. Uh huh. And I think sometimes, you know, and I don't want to say that you're necessarily wrong, because I feel like sometimes you have to be vocal for yourself. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you're not vocal for yourself and you don't let them know, check it at the door like, hey, like, wait mm -hmm. a minute, you're not going to be talking to me crazy. Like, no mm -hmm. matter how sweet and kind and loving I am, you are not about to play with me. Right. You ain't, you ain't going to play in my face right. like that. Like, right. we're not even about to even do that. And I feel mm -hmm. like if you don't, um, if you're not vocal enough to stand up for yourself, people are just going to do what, talk to you however mm -hmm. and keep, and it's going to keep happening. You know, at least even if the situation is persistently you know, happening, at least you know that you've been vocal and you've spoke your piece and you've said what you had to say. And then after that, you just let bygones be bygones, That's it. That's it. you know, and let, um, you know, the creator take care of things because it is not your battle. Ghana just has to step up. Ghana has to step in. Mm -hmm. And Ghana also has to take the initiative to start making a change and putting together some type of, I don't know, structure Yes. I don't exactly know um, what needs to happen, but I know something needs to happen and it has to happen fast or we're going to be in a world of shh. Do you think Ghana should fix this or the U.S. or maybe there should be some people coming together on both sides? Because I think Ghana doesn't know what to do. I think it should for sure be a collaboration, mm -hmm. a okay. collaboration. Um, 
I wouldn't say that the U.S. needs to step in and do anything. The U.S. should just no, no, stay with it. No, no, not the U.S., oh. but the diaspora. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that it has to be a conversation with um, someone who, you know, just a conversation maybe amongst the diaspora and the Ghana government or, you know, the higher ups who are mm -hmm. managing, you know, Ghana has to sit down and have a conversation on what can we do to make this exchange of people from the diaspora coming to Ghana a pleasant one, a more easy one, and one mm -hmm. that is not going to um, put anyone in a position to be taken advantage of. I want to see Ghana be the very best that it can be, and we're going to get there, but, you know, regardless or irrespective of what is taking place or whatever is trying to um, hinder the progress of Ghana, we are going to get to somewhere beautiful. So just stay tuned because Ghana, Ghana's about to blow up. Ghana, yes, Ghana's for yes, sure about yes, to be on the map. It is. Yeah. It is. And I'm going to be here. Huh? Me too. Till the wheels fall off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you for sitting down and having this interview with me. You're welcome. Um, thank you guys for tuning yes, in. Yes, um, yes, this is yes. something new that I would like to introduce to the channel, which is explosive topics. So mm -hmm. if you're tuning in and you even have an explosive topic that you want to talk about, get in contact with me and let's have a conversation to see yes. how we can, you know, converse about different topics. Yes. And don't forget to go on over to her channel, Passport Traveler. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. Also, I want y'all to go ahead and hit that like button share this video and if you're new to the channel make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button i'm melody and you are kimberly and we will see you on the next video Bye -bye. Bye. and i find also that oh i lost my train of thought what was about to say um what was about to say i don't know but we can edit that part yeah out. we can it just <laughs> ran away <laughs> It took flight. Zoom. Melanie is a good editor, y'all. <laughs>